diary. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trisha if we haven't met and if we have met, welcome back. This is the channel where I document my fiber arts journey. So it can be a lot of different things, knitting, spinning, weaving, dyeing, there's more. And recently I finished a sweater I made buttons for. Buttons are so ridiculously expensive and if you need like nine, this sweater needs nine buttons and I wanted something beautiful. I don't know if special is the right word but I wanted something like really pretty. That sounds weird but like I just didn't want something plain off the shelf white plastic buttons and ridiculously expensive. I mean it just doesn't make sense in my brain. One of the reasons I do this myself is because this way I can have exactly what I want. I don't have to settle for something off the shelf at Joann's or wherever that may or may not be perfect. You know what I mean? You put all this time into a sweater, people are going to see the buttons and it's like do I want to just throw on some plain white buttons or plain tortoiseshell buttons? Sometimes maybe yes but usually no. <laughs> because I'm extra! I feel like you guys know this about me already. I embroidered the skirt on a doll dress and it took me like an extra maybe hour and a half to do the whole process. <laughs> So obviously I'm extra and I don't mind saying it. You will need four things for this as in materials. You'll need a few tools also, but you need no special skills and I mean no special skills. Anyone can do this. You do have to trust the process because there are points in the process where they don't look like they're going to look finished, if that makes sense. And so you really just have to trust the process that I'm showing you. It's not new. There are so many polymer clay artists making amazing, gorgeous, like jewelry and all kinds of stuff with this technique. I don't even know what it's called. I didn't mention in the video and I wanted to say it now. There's a point where I use these little round cutters that I just happen to have in my stash. One of the things you can do if you don't have something like that in your stash, but you might. You might and not even really think about it. So do kind of look through and think like, kind of think outside the box if there's something you can use. But if you don't, you can grab a button that's the correct size, just lay it on top once you're all set to cut your buttons out and trace around it like with a little sharp tool of some sort, a pin, a needle, whatever, and use that to cut it out. That's enough babbling. I'm going to quickly show you what one of these buttons looks like up close and then we're going to get into it. Let's see, let's put this on the back of my hand. That always works, right? So I'm going to really get close so you can really, really see. Isn't that cool? Let's go make some buttons. Okay, here's the stuff I'm going to use. This is translucent polymer clay. This is silver leaf. I already had it in my stuff. It's, it's not that expensive to buy a few sheets. You do not need these, but I have these little cutters that are round that are like the perfect thing for buttons, so I'm going to use them. But you don't need these. You can just cut them out yourself. And I have a color of acrylic paint that's going to go with the sweater pretty close. That is what I want, but you might want it to be totally, you know, different. And then I am going to add some mica powder also just because I have it. This is optional. This is liquid polymer clay. I've done it without. You really don't have to have it. Um, I just happen to have some in my stash, so I'm going to use some. And this stuff is toxic, so if you're going to use it, please don't, like, you need to wash your hands after before you eat. Don't let it touch anything that you eat off of. This is a glass cutting board I bought at the dollar store for this because we used to do polymer clay with our kids all the time. So I have a little bit more in the way of supplies. If you watched when I made the Diz, there's a video somewhere where I made my own Diz out of it. You saw that I already have a stash of stuff. Now I also have this jar of buttons that I bought at a garage sale and I just wanna find out what the correct size is to use. So I'm gonna see if I can, I wanna be able to pass it through but not super easily cause I want it to, you know, stay 
I wonder if I can go a little bigger than that, maybe? That seems big for that tiny buttonhole, but let's just see. Oh, nope, pass straight through. Okay, I'm gonna do one this size. It just helps to know what size to use. So let's see. That's this one. So I'm gonna use this little, uh, it's not a, um, it's like a cookie cutter. Okay, so the first thing I need to do, <clears throat> you will not need a lot for nine buttons that are that big. Oh, I forgot, I'll need one, I'll need one more thing. You will need some sort of roller. This is an acrylic roller. It has some clay stuck to it, which I will clean off because I don't want that to show up in my on my buttons. Some sort of roller, like kids clay rolling pins work fine, but you just don't, again, want to use something that you're going to use for food. I'm just going to cut a chunk of this off. Um, it really doesn't need to be very big. The first thing I need to do is condition this. Uh, basically what that means is you just want to warm it up and make it more, um, make it like more, I don't know, what's the word, more pliable. So you can do it with your hands. I'm just gonna continue to cut this and like mold it together over and over until it's a little more pliable. Next, all you do is cut it into tiny, tiny little chunks. I'm about to make a mess and I should have grabbed some paper towels, but I didn't. So we're just gonna go with it. <laughs> um, so now I'm gonna add a little bit of the acrylic paint and I'm gonna mix them. Mix it with these little chunkies. It's so messy. Okay. That was maybe even a little bit more than I want, but it's okay. And I'm gonna drop a little bit of this blue mica powder in here. You really don't need a lot. And I actually have this for stamping, but it does really cool things with polymer clay, so. Then you just mix this all up. See, now it's a big old mess, but it's all right. I'll just go wash my hands. Okay, easy. A three-year-old could do that part, right? Next, we're gonna take some silver leaf. And if you're like me, <laughs> if you use this for a project, like you, you often end up with a bunch of just little bits and pieces of it because it floats apart so easily. I've had this stuff in my stash forever. So all you just do, you can take up your like crumbs from other projects, your crumbs, that makes it sound not so nice. Um, or you can just take a new sheet. It is so light, I'm just breathing and it's moving. Oh, hang on. I want a little bit more. I want a lot of silver in this one, so. Just gonna crumple it into pieces and then we're gonna mix it in again. Um, that paint is not dry, so it'll stick to the paint and that's what we want, okay? A lot of it. Then, optional, you can use some liquid polymer clay. That'll help like stick it together. You just need a little bit, but you it will stick together without this. Uh, when I did that Diz, I did not use the liquid polymer clay and it stuck together just fine. So next, I'm gonna like smush it together into a little, cube. Okay, I've picked it all up. I'm totally getting my hands smushing it together <laughs> into a cube shape. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna set this aside and clean this off. You just have to trust the process. I don't know what else to say to you. So now we're gonna take our blade again, or knife or whatever you wanna use, regular razor blade is fine. And we're gonna slice it. Looks like I'm gonna have five. That's perfectly fine. Okay, now, I'm gonna smush these with each other. I wanna smush these together. Um, and we're just gonna push that one in right there. Okay, I'm gonna take my um, roller and roll these out. I've gotta have enough for nine, right? So I'm going to just pick where I want to cut them out. One. Then you just bake these at 275 for 30 minutes. Um, I actually have a piece of foil that I'm gonna transfer them to and bake them on the foil so that I don't have to touch a pan. This is actually a little bowl of water with some very fine grit, um, just grit in it for sanding. This is for glass actually. And um, so you can just use a very fine sandpaper and I would do it like in water. So the last thing I will do is just take this and drill a couple holes in it so I can sew it on obviously, but that's what it will look like on my sweater. Okay, so I am just testing out what size drill bits I wanna use. I did use a 1 16th the first time. I'm gonna show it to you so you can see. Okay. I think this will be okay, but they could be even a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna try a 564 because I happen to have one. I'm gonna eyeball all of these because I want them to look handmade. So I do not want them to necessarily be placed perfectly exactly, but you can make yourself like a little template if you want them to be placed in some perfect identical place. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna go ahead and drill these up. Okay, they are not sewed on still, but this is what they look like finished. Here's one, I'm gonna show you a different one. There's one. If you buy one of those blocks of clay, it will last you so long. And you know, even all the materials probably cost what I would have spent on buttons for this one sweater. And there's plenty to do so many more. So try it. I know some of you are gonna be like, that looked hard. It is so easy. Just pause the video, follow it step-by-step. Step. You can do it. I hope this helps somebody save some money on buttons and I will see you soon. Thanks, I love you, bye.